I love when I can find a hidden gem, a book that's not talked about a lot, it doesn't have a lot of ratings, and I end up having a really good time with it. So today I'm going to be telling you about nine of the most underrated books that I read this year that I really think you should check out. First, I want to quickly start with a grouping of six honorable mentions. These are books that do not have a lot of reviews. According to Goodreads, all these books have under 3,000 reviews, so they are underrated books, but these aren't my top, top favorites that I loved. I did enjoy all of these books, so I do want to tell you about them, but they're not going to be in the top nine. So very quickly, we have Cryptid Club by Sarah Anderson. This is a short little comic of a bunch of different types of cryptids and monsters. You have the Loch Ness Monster, you have Mothman, and all kinds of creatures in here and it's just a little comic book. I read this one super quickly. You can flip through it all in one setting. It wasn't the funniest comic I've ever read but it was a cute idea and I did have a couple chuckles throughout and this one currently has around 2400 ratings and only 500 reviews. Next is Mary and Awakening of Terror by Nat Cassidy which has around 1500 reviews. This is a horror novel that follows this woman named Mary who is getting ready to turn 50 years old and she's starting to have a lot of symptoms that seem like menopause but it also seems like there might be some something supernatural going on as well. According to the author, Mary is a sort of reimagining of Carrie from Stephen King's universe, so you can definitely see some parallels throughout the story. It is a little bit long, it did drag on a little bit, but it was a really great book and I'm super excited to see what the author does next. Next up is Below by Laurel Hightower. I will talk about Laurel Hightower any chance I get. This book has just over a thousand ratings and this one I actually did really enjoy. It was pretty close to a five star for me, but I have another Laurel Hightower that's going to make it into the top nine, so this one I put and honorable mentions. In this story, you're following a woman who gets stuck in a snowstorm in West Virginia with a stranger and has to make a very difficult decision over whether to save him or to save herself. Super creepy, fast paced, and a lot of fun. Next is The Stars Are Not Yet Bells by Lilith Asadi, which has right around 700 ratings on Goodreads. This is a really interesting genre defying book that has a little bit literary fiction, a little bit of a magical feel to it, a little bit of a romantic feel to it as well, and also a little bit of a mystery or horror plot to it as well. You're following this woman named Elle who is beginning to lose her memories due to Alzheimer's and she's trying to piece together the story of her life, how she ended up on this island, what happened to her husband's business, what happened to her old lover. It is harrowing and emotional and mysterious and just absolutely beautiful writing. Next is Anybody Home by Michael J. Sedlinger which has around 500 ratings on Goodreads. This is a horror story that is written in second person that is addressing you, the reader, and teaching you how to execute a home invasion. The story has a really interesting concept behind it. It did take me a little bit to get into it because the writing style is so unique, but the second half of this book definitely had a great payoff, and the overall message of the book and how it was communicated I thought was really smart. And finally, The Lunchling by Jay Alexander. This has around 200 ratings on Goodreads. This is a horror novella about this couple who's trying to get their child to eat, and so they use this puppet called The Lunchling, and they say, if you don't eat your food, The Lunchling is going to get you. Just a small thing and a string of white lies that you tell your child, but when the puppet seems like it might be coming back for vengeance, things get scary. The author has said he may be making this into a series, so I'm super interested to see if he ends up doing that because I had a lot of fun with this one. Now let's hop into the top nine. First is My Dearest Darkest by Kayla Cottingham. This has under 3,000 ratings on Goodreads, and it is a YA dark academia, supernatural, sapphic sort of mystery, thriller, horror book. It has a ton of buzzwords packed in there, all the things I enjoy, and I really really liked this one. You're following this girl named Finch Chamberlain who is trying to get into this academy and right before she actually gets into the academy and goes there she ends up getting in a car accident with her parents and her parents do not survive the accident. It also seems like she shouldn't have survived the accident but somehow she does and then she does end up going off to this academy and while she's there she's starting to discover things about herself and discovering things about what's going on at the academy. She also starts to feel drawn to this popular girl Selena St. Clair, and they kind of have this frenemy type relationship at the beginning as well, but then they end up having to come together to defeat whatever is going on at this academy. This book is compulsively readable. It's perfect if you like YA horror. It's great if you like supernatural elements and sapphic elements in your stories as well. I believe this was this author's debut and her next book was recently announced. The cover of it looks amazing. I can't wait to pick that one up as well. And this book truly does not get enough love. So I highly recommend it. Next up with around
down 2500 ratings on Goodreads is The Between by Tanana Reeve Du. This is a beautifully executed story about this man who is on the brink of losing it all. You're following this man named Hilton and when he was a boy he had an incident where he almost drowned in the ocean but he was saved by his grandmother. But while she was saving him she ended up losing her own life and that was a big monumental moment in Hilton's life that he carries a lot of survivor's guilt over and that he never really fully properly addresses and it all starts to catch up on him now as he is an adult. He has a wife now, he has children, and his wife was recently elected into a office in the government and she starts receiving a lot of threatening racist notes towards herself and her family, her children. And this makes Hilton highly insecure about the safety of his family. He begins having all these nightmares again like he used to have a long time ago and he's trying to piece together how to save his family and how to save himself. This book packs so much depth into every single sentence. It is just so beautifully constructed and so realistic and these characters just feel so complex and so well drawn out. It was just truly so intriguing to follow this character as he's really trying to save his family and save himself and work through all of this trauma and protect his family. It was my first book I read from Tanana Rivdu and I will definitely be reading more. Next up with just under 2,000 ratings on Goodreads is The Women Could Fly by Megan Giddings. I love the way the description of this one is written so I'll just read it out to you. Reminiscent of the works of Margaret Atwood, Shirley Jackson, and Octavia Butler, a biting social commentary from the acclaimed author of Lakewood that speaks to our times, a piercing dystopian novel about the unbreakable bond between a young woman and her mysterious mother set in a world in which witches are real and single women are closely monitored. In this story you're following this woman named Josephine who is a black bisexual woman who is edging towards the age of 30 in a world where the government wants to control women so deeply that you must be married by I believe the age of 30 or else the government will then be monitoring you. Josephine's not particularly interested in succumbing to these ideas that the government has for how women should behave. She's not particularly interested in marriage and she's got a lot of questions she wants to answer herself for her mother who disappeared so long ago. Her mother's been missing for a while and they finally decide to declare her as dead and so then her mother's will is read and in the will the mother requested that Josephine takes this trip to this island. So she decides to do that and then she is able to learn things about her mother's past and her place in society and it makes her question herself and her own path. This was such a beautifully written book. I listened to the entire thing on audiobook thanks to Libra FM's ALC program and I absolutely loved it. I love the audio experience. It was just such a beautifully atmospheric book. I also just love stories of mothers and daughters so if you like that too I would highly recommend it. It has such a magical feel to the story because this is a world in which witches are real as well and there's just some beautiful social commentary throughout the book. It's the only thing I've read from Megan Giddings so far but I definitely want to pick up Lakewood next because I do have that on my shelves. I think this is going to be an author that I'm really going to enjoy. Next up with just under 2,000 ratings on Goodreads is Crossroads by Laurel Hightower, one of my favorite horror novellas if not my favorite horror novella that I read this year. This is a beautiful depiction on grief. It is so haunting. It is so visceral. It is so wonderfully written and I love every single thing about it. You're following this woman named Chris whose adult son died in a car accident and she frequently likes to go visit the site where he passed. One day she ends up shedding blood at the site and then she starts thinking that she's seeing his ghost and it becomes a story of how much she's willing to sacrifice to potentially get some semblance of her loved one back in her life. This one is sad, it is heavy, it is graphic, all of those warnings in place but it is so so good. So if you like me tend to really resonate with horror that centers around grief I would highly highly recommend this. I'm pretty sure it's my favorite horror novella maybe ever. I really really liked it. Next up is The New Neighbor by Carter Wilson. This is a thriller author I discovered this year and I had a lot of fun with this story. You're following this guy named Aiden who one day his wife passes away and in that same day he ends up winning the lottery. A day of extreme highs and extreme lows he decides to take that money and use it to move himself and his children to a new town in a large new house to try to restart their lives. But once they get there they start receiving strange notes that someone is watching them and they get increasingly threatening along the way. Aiden doesn't know who he can trust in his community including himself. I read this book so quickly I was so pulled into it I had to know what was going on. I absolutely love that psychological element of not knowing who to trust even potentially your narrator so I had so much fun 
trying to just put together the puzzle of this one and learn all the people in the community and understand what was going on in the history of the house because there's also kind of like a creepy haunting thing going on with the house and it was just right up my alley with all the things I enjoy in mystery thriller books. This also is reminiscent of the show The Watcher on Netflix which is based on a true crime case. I actually read this before I ever knew about or watched that show but I do see a lot of similarities in them so if you do like that show which is super popular this is definitely a underrated book that I would recommend for you to give a try. Next up with just over a thousand ratings on Goodreads is Cirque Berserk by Jessica Guess. This is a super fun, fast, small slasher horror story. You're following this group of kids who is going to this abandoned amusement park for a night of fun, but it quickly turns bloody. I wasn't expecting to enjoy this one as much as I did because I don't typically gravitate towards slashers, but this one had a really fun surprise element in it as well that really enhanced the story for me. I got invested in the story really, really quickly, which made the story really exciting and fun. It has all the perfect elements of a slasher, and it also has some flashback scenes back in the 80s or early 90s because this amusement park also has a brutal history where an initial incident took place 30 years ago and so you're also trying to connect what happened in the past with what's going on now. It was really fun, really twisty, really fast paced, and a perfect quick slasher even for people who aren't sure if they like slashers like me. Next up with under a thousand ratings we have A Sliver of Darkness by CJ Tudor. Now this is a newer book so it may become more rated over time but right now I would say it's still quite underrated. This is CJ Tudor's first first published collection of short stories and they are a mix of mystery thriller and horror stories. Some of them blend all those elements all in one. I believe there's about nine stories in this collection and I really had a good time with it. I actually vlogged my experience with the short story collection. I talked about every single story, which ones I liked the most. I stack rank them and I talk about every single one. So I'll link that video down below if you want to check it out to hear full thoughts on this. But overall, I was really impressed with this. I just really like CJ Tudor's writing style and there's also some stories in here that give a new perspective on her writing style too. You see her be a bit more playful, a bit more witty and fun with some of the horror stories that are in here as well. There's some really unique ones and it was just a really good compilation of stories. So if you like short story collections, I'd recommend picking it up. If you don't like short story collections, I still might recommend picking it up because I also don't know if I love short story collections yet. I'm still relatively new in reading them and trying them out, but this one I did have a lot of fun with. And I think especially if you've read from CJ Tudor before, this would be a good one for you to try out especially if you know that you like her writing style. Next up with just under a thousand ratings on Goodreads is Autumn Crow by Cameron Chaney. This was the buddy read for the second round that I did of the 24 hour horrorathon in October and I was blown away with how much I enjoyed this book. We've got two short story collections back to back. I can't believe it that I was enjoying some short story collections so much this year because it is just such a new thing for me but I am finding that I am able to enjoy some of them. This is a collection of stories all set in this town called Autumn Crow where it's Halloween all year long. Similar to a sliver of darkness I do have all of my thoughts on this as well but it isn't a live show so I'll link that live show below where I was reading this on reading sprints if you want to see my updates on it throughout. Burnt Brownies was one of my favorite stories in here but I enjoyed so many of them. They're a really good mix of lighthearted and fun and silly, a little bit darker and creepier and scarier, some filled with sadness and grief. It was just a really good overview and I like how all of them are in this autumn crow town and you're learning a little bit about Autumn Crow as you get towards the end of the collection and I just thought it was really a lot of fun. It was a perfect fall read and it definitely deserves more love. And finally with under 500 ratings on Goodreads this one is definitely not read enough. We have Sometime in Summer by Katrina Leno. I'm definitely a little biased because I love everything Katrina Leno writes. I feel like I connect to her writing so much. Her stories always just feel so emotional for me. I just really really love her writing but this one I promise is really so so good. You're probably following this girl named Anna who is going through a difficult time in her life. I believe she's around 13 years old. This is more of a middle grade age book and her parents are going through a divorce and so that's really uncomfortable for her and she's just going through a lot of life transitions. Her family has always owned this bookstore and that's been a really special place for her and they're getting ready to sell the bookstore and so she's going on this trip with her mom over the summer to go back to the east coast and she's not super excited about it because she's just feeling really down about a lot of things going on in her life. But she ends up having such a magical summer when she meets some friends in this town and oh my goodness this book was such a surprise. I didn't realize what direction it was going in but once I realized where we were going I absolutely fell in love with it. It's such a beautiful story. It has such a magical emotional feel to it and I wasn't sure if I was going to love it as much because it is more of a middle grade book and I don't really read a lot of middle grade but I absolutely loved it. It's such a good summertime read so if you didn't get to it this year 
I definitely put it on your list for next summer. So that is it for my list of the most underrated books that I read this year. I truly loved all of these books and I highly recommend them. They really don't get enough love. So if any of them stood out to you and if I convinced you to pick them up, definitely let me know down in the comments below because I would love to see these books getting more reads. And if you have read any of these books already and you love them too, let me know as well in the comments down below. Also, if you have any recommendations yourself for books that you read this year that you really enjoyed, that you don't see getting read a lot, that you don't see getting enough ratings that you'd like to recommend, leave those down below as well because I love finding a good hidden gem. But that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!